I'm Richard Brown from the Mississippi Entomological Museum at Mississippi State University. The Microlepidoptera include many moths that are small in size. Sometimes they have fringes on their hair. And this is a common name we use for a large number of moths that include some very important families. If we compare the Microlepidoptera with the macros, the larger moths like the noctuoids and, and other things, we see the list of CAP's priority pest list. And we see that about half of the species on this list are what we call micros, the microleps. If we look at the Microlepidoptera, we see that there are really three big families that pop up again and again as a priority pest. These are the Gelichioidea, a superfamily that with several families included, the Tortricidae, and the Pyroloidea. Now Dr. Solis will be doing a presentation on the Pyroloidea later that will go into detail about some of the important species of this superfamily. Gelichioidea include about 1,400 genera, more than 16,000 species worldwide. It's a large group, and you can see on this phylogeny, the width of that red bar in the phylogeny indicates the diversity of species compared with some of the other superfamilies. There's at least 1,600 species of Gelichioids in America, north of Mexico. We don't have any idea how many are south of the border, but we do know, based upon the lifelong work of Dr. Ron Hodges, that perhaps 60% of the species of Gelichioids are undescribed in America, north of Mexico, and we'd expect many more in areas that have been poorly collected. The Gelichioids include a uh, species with a diversity of hosts. This crosses the range from angiosperms, gymnosperms, mosses, lichens. They have incredibly diverse life histories. They can uh, mine leaves and needles, roll leaves into tubes. They cause galls. Some are scavengers. They can bore in stems. Some are seed feeders, acorns, and other seeds. And indeed, some can be predators on scaled insects and other homopterans. Gelichioidea are characterized by having the labial palpus that's strongly upcurved up to the top of the head and sometimes beyond the top of the head. This strongly recurved labial palpus is very distinctive. The other characteristic is that the proboscis is scaled in this superfamily. It's also scaled in the pyroloids and the corudidae, and this feature readily separates the Gelichioids from some of the other superfamilies of the Microlepidoptera. Ketocemata are absent. These are very fine, short, hair-like seedy that are found behind the ocellus and the figure on the left, you cannot see them. On the right, you see the Ketocemata in tortricity. The hind tibia in Gelichioids has the dorsal surface with long, slender seedy or scales. Galicians are the most diverse family of the Galicioidea, almost 900 species here in the United States. It's the most important group economically of all of the Galicioidea. Galicians have a hind wing with an apex that is drawn out, very distinctive. It's almost like a finger projection on the end of the wing. This is not true for all species. In some it's rounded, but in many you have this distinctive apex of the hind wing. Some of the important uh, Gelichioids are the pink bollworm, Pectinophora gossipiella, shown here with the genitalia. Other important species include Tuta absoluta, the tomato leaf miner. Coleotechnites include several species that are important in forestry, feeding, uh, in this case, the lodgepole needle miner can be in large numbers causing uh, pest status at times. There are some that are feeding in fruits. This is the avocado seed moth that uh, we are on the alert for. Tortricidae is a, again, a relatively large family, uh, 9,000 species worldwide, uh, about 1,400 species in North America, and they have many agricultural and forest pests. If we look at this caps list again, we see that 
Tortricids make up almost half of the ones that we are concerned about. In tortricids, the proboscis is naked. It's not scaled. The second segment of the labial palpus sort of ascends slightly, and the third segment is often standing out at an angle or correct. We refer to the lab labial palpi as being correct in tortricity. Chetosemata are present behind the ocellus. Within the family, there are two major subfamilies, the Olothutini and Tortricini. Now, the Olothutini typically have distinct costal striguli. Even in species that have pale wings, you can see these lighter marks that occur between the veins. Or you can look at the underside of the wing, and often these striguli stand out in contrast on the underside of the wing. The antennae have one scale roll per segment. If you look at the hind wing, if it can be expanded, you will see hairs or cubital pectin pectin-like hairs on the cubitus of the vein. In the tortricini, you have an antenna with two scale rows per segment. There are no cubital pectin, and often the four wings are arched near the base. Compare the olothrutine on the left, in which the costa, the leading edge of the wing, gently goes to the thorax, whereas in the tortricini on the right, you have a curving or arching of that edge of the wing. Tortricis include leaf rollers, miners, stem and root borers. In fact, I refer to them as feeding from root to fruit because they can be in seeds, seed predators, they can be in other fruits, parts of the flower. Some can make galls, and in fact, some tortricids are gregarious, forming a web, much like uh, a fall webworm and some of the other gregarious tent builders. The Thomatotibia leucotreta, the fox codling moth, has distinctive sex scales in the male and it's one that we're concerned about because of its wide host range. Often in traps that are operated for detection of the fox codling moth, we get this non-target genandrosoma. But if you look at the genandrosoma, there are yellow hair pencils on the abdomen that easily distinguishes it from the false codling moth. The light brown apple moth, which is present here, is quite variable and a very important pest species. Others that we look for, summer fruit tortrix. The Cydia splendana is not on the caps list, but nonetheless is one of importance and concern. Other families of importance include these, and I will go through and give a few uh, comments about each of these other families of Microlepidopter, beginning with Lionetiidae. These are very small, five millimeters or less. We're talking about something like that, very small moth. But there is a enlarged segment of the antenna at the base, and it forms a cap covering the eye. We say it has an eye cap. The larvae of these moths are miners of leaves, and they'll make a blotch mine. Now, sometimes you'll see mines and leaves that are linear and sort of wander about on the leaf, but in this case, there is a blotch mine that doesn't have a lot of the meandering lines that's present in other leaf miners. Ciciidae are sometimes considered wasp and bee mimics, and indeed, some of them are very wasp-like because they're Wings can be clear. They actually have scales, but the scales are narrow, and so the wings appear to be somewhat transparent. In some cases, there is sexual dimorphism. Uh, some females will have the front wing scaled, as in the bottom right. In other cases, both male and female have the clear wings. They're diurnal. They're active during the daytime. The larvae are important as borers in roots and stems and wood and uh, can cause considerable damage. Eponin mutoidea includes several families. We can recognize these with dissection. The male abdomen has these lobes on the eighth abdominal segment, but there's really no external characteristic to distinguish eponin mutoids from many other families. The proboscis is not scaled, so you can exclude the paraloids, but for the superfamily as a whole, there's no distinctive characteristic that is shared by all the families. Eponymutidae, the family itself, the labial palps are smooth 
in contrast to some families that have rough scales or tufts coming off of one of the palpal segments. The head is smooth in contrast to some micros that have a rough bushy head and the apex of the wing is, hind wing is usually rounded. Many of the Euponymutids have a spotted forewing as shown in this species. Plutelidae is another family of Euponymutoidea. Their antennae are held out straight when at rest in front of the body. Their labial palpi, shown in the middle image at the bottom, tends to be rough or tufted at the second segment, whereas the third segment is smooth and upturned. The proboscis is not scaled, and the hind wing apex is rather drawn out and lanceolate, narrowed to the apex. Acrolepiidae, this includes the leek moth. Proboscis is naked. The labial palps are smooth scaled and upturned, but not so much as the galecioids. The maxillary palps are folded over the base of the proboscis, and that's a distinctive characteristic. You can see in the top right photograph the red arrow pointing to the maxillary palp. The head is smooth scaled in the front or the fronds, whereas the top or vertex is rough scaled. Here are some references and resources that you may want to uh, examine for more information on some of these important microlepidoptera. Thank you. Are there any questions? Are Ciseids the only moths that have clear wings? The question, are Ciseids the only family with clear wings? And in fact, there are other families of moths with clear wings. Specifically, there are some sphingidae you see flying in the daytime. We call them hummingbird sphinx, and they have large areas of the wing that are scaleless. But perhaps the most abundant group of moths that have clear wings are in the Arctiaeni of the Eurybidae family. And within the Arctiaeni, there's a group that has clear wings, are very wasp-like, in fact, I have seen some that I thought was a wasp, but it's nothing more than one of the day-flying moths.